Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to finally get around to playing with the uh, ESP8266. This thing's been on my radar for months, and uh, it just seems to keep getting uh, more and more interesting, and I hadn't jumped on board yet, so here we go. Uh, mainly I'm going to refer you to the blog post that I just made, which I'll link in below. Um, but uh, just real quickly, uh, this Chinese company Expressive uh, came out with this chip, uh, the ESP8266, uh, late 2014, and this was, I think, the first board that was generally come on focus you uh, that was generally available. Uh, it only has an eight-pin header on it. Uh, it only brought out uh, enough pins for an SPI interface, uh, and that. Uh, was intended to that I think their assumption was that people would use this as a peripheral on a Arduino or something like that. Indeed it is useful like that. Uh, but pretty quickly people realized, you know, that chip is an thirty two bit ARM core and look at the IO on that sucker. It's got a lot of pins and they're only bringing out a couple of them. Uh so they talked to the company, and the company said, "Hey, we just want to sell chips. You know, here, here you go." And pretty quickly, people came up with uh, uh, released boards like this one that have all of the I/O bro broken out. Uh, these are really available right now f for dirt cheap, less than five bucks, and it's got. And then pretty quickly, uh, also people ported uh, a bunch of different environments, including Arduino, to it. This particular board here I bought is just a play around board. Uh, it's a development board that has uh, a socket for this. It has the chip in it to allow it to be programmed via um, USB. It's got one of the CHP chips in it. Uh, and it has a 3.3 volt regular. That's one thing. This, this, this thing runs on 3.3 volts. Don't try to power it off of 5 volts. It'll just end in smoke and tears. Um, so anyway, this thing, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to pro uh, program it in Arduino. Uh, I've written a little piece of code here, which is completely horrible, but uh, gets, th gets the job done. Uh, there's some uh, pages linked in the blog post on how to install uh, the drivers in the Arduino environment to run this thing. Uh, but basically... Uh, and, and there's also a schematic which you'll want to look at. Uh, by the way, this little hanging off LED here is because uh, the LED that came in here just the green was fried on the thing. I don't know whether you know that was like that when I got it or I did that, but in any case, I just soldered another green LED to it. So uh, let's see. I've got my USB plugged in here. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the schematic, you'll see you want to have uh, switches one through six turned on here, seven and eight turned off. Seven, I think, for some reason, just shorts out the red, disables the red LED. I don't know why. And eight uh, shorts GPIO to uh, ground, which you need to do. Uh, that's one thing that. Uh, it's just a little trick here, um, but S2 also shorts GPIO zero to ground. In order to get this thing into bootloader mode so that it will accept a new program, you have to hold down G that that switch, or G if you're using some other version of the of the board, GPIO zero, and then turn it on. And when you do that, now it's in bootloader mode. You don't have to keep holding that down. And then uh, just press upload here it says compiling sketch okay uploading and you'll see down here there it's it's uh, receiving the sketch now and as soon as it finishes here it'll take uh, like 20 seconds or so um, it'll then uh, start talking on the uh, serial monitor uh, which you want to have set up up here on my code. I've got it set to 9600 baud. All it's going to do is just show you progress at connecting to the Wi-Fi. 
Um, should be just about done now. There it goes. I'm going to bring up the serial monitor now, and we should see. I missed the first message from it, but it, they're connecting to my network. Okay, okay, I had to restart it. Um, I don't know why, but sometimes this thing just refuses to connect. Uh, anyway, you'll see there that it's connected and it has an IP address um, about, about 26. And if you go over here, um, you want to go to your web browser and just, I've already been playing with it here a bit, but if you just go to that IP address, it'll show you this. And you'll see here that it is, it's got some links here to make things happen. Um, it's reading the analog input and it's reading the output of the humidity and temperature sensor. The analog input is this little pot right here. Um, now that pot is set to divide up the 0 to 3.3 .3 volt range and if you read the dock on this on this chip the input range is actually 0 to 1 volt so if it's over 1 volt it just reads 1024 so there's a bunch of range on this thing that just reads 1024 so you're going to turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and it doesn't seem like it's doing anything and finally when you get it down below 1 volt which you can probe on whatever the uh, if, if you put a voltmeter between ground and the uh, uh, ADC pin there when it gets down below 1 volt you should start seeing it return something besides 1024 um, and you can like blow breath into this thing and make the humidity go up um, I've got here we'll poke the toggle red thing and there, the red light goes on or actually on the red light I was playing around with the analog to digital or digital analog the pulse width modulation modulation to uh, make it fade in and out instead of just clicking on and off so you can see that fades up and down if you do like the blue here you just you click it once it goes on you click it again and it goes off and uh, it's not the fastest thing in the world there's also control of the little white LED that's next to that one. Um, let me uh, click that. You can see how ridiculously slow this is, but the white is off now. There's a buzzer on board. In general, I, I think you want to leave the sticker on that thing because I've used those buzzers before and they're ridiculously loud when you. Um, take the sticker off and then there's a relay with a green LED next to it that you can turn on and off you can hear it click there um, and also to uh, to do something besides just turn on and off I put the uh, go fabulous uh, link there which uh, makes it do a bunch of color shifting here and it's not quite as pretty as it could be with the green off on a separate LED there, but it's kind of cool. Anyway, that's that. Um, this is just intended to be a placeholder for myself, and hopefully somebody might be able to uh, use this as a stepping stone. Uh, you'll definitely want to play around with my uh, code and make it not as horrible. One thing that I do need to address, probably the very next thing, is um, right now the best provisioning, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, the best provisioning thing that I can think of so far is to have this thing go into access point mode, create its own network. You can connect to that network then with a, uh, a phone or something like that, and then provision it from there. And then, uh, you know, you could just type in the network name and password and set it up that way. I also need to figure out how to write to non-volatile RAM and this thing uh, to save all that stuff off and various stuff like that. Oh, right. And uh, this here, this is another one that I got. Uh, this is designed more for being obviously pretty darn small. It even has the antenna, the little ceramic thing on the end there is the antenna. Uh, it's got the little half moon connections on the side. So 
that's ridiculous. I mean, this is so cool that this kind of stuff is available. This thing's less than three bucks. Gives you full Wi-Fi. Gives you, you know, a, a pretty powerful processor. Um, you know, you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Anyway, hope this is useful to some of you guys. Uh, enjoy. Have fun. Make something cool.